Uh, question for you, uh, Professor uh, Michael. Uh, I think that uh, cable technique, although uh, we hear it from you, but I think some of my colleagues a uh, little bit uh, shy to ask you some questions. I think this. I had I this was so especially for the cable technique that we hear from Professor Firan. I, I know that some of you have some questions and more. So please start to ask him. He can explain for you. Yes, Father. Thank you, Professor Wapak. Thank you, Michael. Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, you fix the the bone, in usually in a coronal uh, blade, by to uh, by the skewer. How you prevent it from going anterior and posterior and rotation? Good question. It's one cable. It's not two cables. Yes, it's one cable, but yeah. come from yeah, both sides. This low. Yeah. And to prevent it from this location, I always use intramedullary design of light. But in some cases, you don't use intramedullary. Yeah, in, this, in these cases, uh, I was sure that I would get a precise cutting. Uh, and uh, in some of the cases, uh, or actually only one, I had a dislocation, so I decided to uh, use these intramedullary wires, which are very useful. And uh, when you do this, you don't get a rotation at all, because so the... the front of this stage to have huh? the photo with it. Yes, yes, coming in. Yes. Okay. So, in uh, the rotates are in one plane. So, you cannot rotate. Yeah, it's pulling in the wrong direction. Uh, and even if you uh, haven't um, lead the cables properly out, as I said, if this, if, the, if this is the bone, you have to be in the, leading out in the middle of the bone. If you go above, if you have these intramedullary wires, yeah, uh, the, 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 the go straight. Bone, bone transport will go straight like a train on the rail. Yes. That's so a big advantage. But all, I always try to put it exactly in the correct level of the, of the uh, bone. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, do you have any complication like the cable cut through the bone? While you are traction downwards, uh, don't you think about uh, making some cannulated uh, device and uh, coming through it, like cannulated screw or something, to make uh, this pulling in a straight direction without having any complication of this? Very good question. You know, <coughs> so more I do surgeries, I more prefer the easy techniques. And if easy techniques give me a good result, I don't need anything complicated. Uh, Prochal, for example, uh, in Germany, use cannulated screws. Severe problems, breaking of screws, breaking of the bone. I never had a slipping through of the cable cutting through the bone, never, with this technique. If you make only one drill hole and you put the, the wires in, then you cut through. If you take this Spunel technique, the slope over the bone, it won't cut through. And I had one case where I didn't realize that the bone transport uh, produced their own uh, spigula of bone uh, from the periosteum, so I had a premature docking, and I couldn't see it because of the frame in the pictures. And I pulled and pulled, the bone breaks, but not the, not the cable because of the stress. So it was not a cutting through, it was a completely fracture of the bone. Yeah. So I prefer simple techniques. And uh, you only, when you resect the bone, you don't have to open more. You need only two centimeters to make these two crossing drill holes yeah, and to insert the cable. If someone is interested, I have five minutes, uh, five minute presentation, a video, uh, how to do this technique. If there is there more time, I can show it. Sorry. You uh, only have to tell me that. Another question. If the, if the patient has a wound softening problem, uh, or what the, problem? A wound softening problem, what do you mean? Like, because this lint is not working uh, uh, for a long time, yeah. this use. So, uh, is it applicable for the cable 
to be put like this, or you add something. If it's too osteoporotic, this might be a problem. Yeah. Um, I had only one case in Cochepsoid arthrosis of the tibia where the patient had uh, uh, over 12 unsuccessful operations, no weight bearing, and a severe osteoporotic situation uh, <laughs> of the bone. Uh, I tried to make a service procedure with the bone transport, but it failed because the bone was too soft and the get not a proper re uh, regenerate. But this was the only case. When you select your case for the assumption I, I, I don't select it too much. It was only one very rare case. Yeah? But uh, if, if you have a normal case, infection, tumor, or whatsoever, uh, without a big osteomalacia or osteoporosis, uh, you can do it. So, but if you uh, if the video is available with you? Yeah, I have. I, I can.
read these two wires, I am uh, checking on the amplifier. Once you have that, you know all the other wires are uh, out of the joint, and you only need, if you have to do that, you check it if you have used half wings in the, in the right uh, distance, depth of the ball. So I, I take my time in these reference wires and adjust the frame uh, in the proper position so that in the lateral space you have more space than medium and dorsal more than uh, ventral. No, the, the typical uh, in, in sort of uh, principles. This is real time here. This is not uh, fast motion. And while you're working, I always have an assistant who is fixing the bits, you know? So I can work properly. Always one has to fix the rings and one has to do the action. Okay. This is the distal one, according to the joint line of the anchor joint. It's also okay. And then you see the hammer, I adjust the frame with the hammer so that everything is aligned. Yeah? Then at always, whenever I put one wire or half pin, I check the joint motion. <coughs> if you fix only one fiber of a tendon, you are in trouble. So this is uh, now um, the osteotomy. Don't worry about the, the, the smoke. I did a resection later uh, without smoke. This is the, the shitty saw because we are very close to the to the ring. We can't use the oscillating saw. This is the tumor, also adamantinoma. Yeah? And here with the skin, where the biopsy pattern was, we have to do it. So here you have to follow the principles of tumor research. Because I have uh, education also in pathological anatomy, I take um, uh, the possibility to the advantage to check it by myself. I change the class afterwards, and it's, uh, it's checked on a different table, so I don't uh, infect uh, anything of the healthy tissue. So I can check by myself if I have done the resection in the correct way. And this is now the drilling for, you see, I leave the driller in place. Everything from laterally, you see, post drill, drill holes. And then I pull through the cable and make the, the slope over the pole. This is, you know, you see, yeah, this is the slope now. And the exposure of the pole, of the transported segment, uh, it's the same as you need for the recession. So you don't have to expose more bone. And this is only two centimeters, or two and a half minutes in this case. So now the hemobar train, put the cable into the uh, plastic, and then the leading out inside, along the bone, outside of the soft tissue, as you see here. And when you pull up the hemorrhoid train, the cable will fall. You see? Here it comes. Here's the cable. Perfect aligned. Same on the other side. Simulation now is how to assemble the pulleys. You can use the insert of devices, any length of the plates, depending on the case. Put it uh, connected with the post to the ring. You can do the same with the TSA. Depends on the case. 
And because you can um, put it up and down, you can adjust everything. Yeah? The distance to the skin and <laughs> maybe the results. So then the pose get fixed. Both sides, and then you adjust the destructors. Okay. And these are the, you know, the cylinder blocks where you fix the end of the wires to connect it to the destructors. At the beginning, I didn't have uh, had the long cylinder rods, so I connect this cylinder rod to a longer uh, normal rod to get the destruction distance. But meanwhile, they have also long slides. So you don't need it. So I use a, a retro cube to connect the slotted rod with the normal The normal is our guys, they are always doing improvisation. You know, this is the funny thing. Good thing as well. So here you use the couple washers also to get the destructor not in any stress and uh, to get in a proper alignment to the cable itself. If you don't want to have a step or something like this, this will uh, result in a good distraction. And here I can use a long ferrite rod. I put this uh, nut, you know, this is this uh, uh, not with these points uh, for fixation after destruction. So every time when the patient open, the, open this one, they do the destruction, then they close it. This prevents um, from untrilling the cable. I'm happy for an intact fibula. 
You only need to, to uh, uh, cut a fibula if you want to do a lower leg laxity. Or if you want acute, to do acute short leg. Or if you want to do acute short leg. Yeah. But here, uh, to do acute short leg is not possible on this length. Yeah. 